Hello everybody, I'm Carla Ojeda Yarso. I'm an English teacher from Magallanes region. Um, I was actually born and raised in Puerto Natales. Um, and before I continue, um, I would like to say thank you for giving us this space, this time to share about our experiences as English teachers and to also learn from each other and support each other during these times. A little bit about me career-wise, I got my bachelor degree in education from Universidad de Magallanes in 2008. And recently I got my master's degree in school counseling from the Pennsylvania State University in the United States in 2018. And after that, I worked as a counselor and as a classroom assistant in the state of New York um, until this year when I came back to Chile and reintegrated to the school system. I work in two schools in Torres del Paine School District and both are located in two different areas. Um, one is Ramon Serrano Montaner School and that one is located in Cerro Castillo Village. So I will say um, 95% sure that if you ever happen to visit Torres del Paine National Park, you will pass by the village or stop by the village. And the other school is also on the way to the park, but it's located in Cerro Guido Estancia. Both schools are public rural schools and have multi-grade classrooms, which is not weird since 58% of rural schools in Chile are multi-grade, which means you can have students from first grade to fourth grade in one classroom. In my case, I have students from second grade to eighth grade in the school of Cerro Nido. And in uh, Ramon Serrano Montaner, I have four groups divided into first to third grade, fourth to fifth grade, and then seventh and eighth grade um, in one group, but working with them in separate times. Um, Besides, both schools count with a school integration program, which I believe is a huge support for them. And the level of vulnerability in the school district is of 75%. And here, I would like to point out um, the main aspects each school has in the case of uh, Ramon Serrano Montaner School, we are just a few steps away from um, a border crossing point that connects us to Argentina. And I will say no more than 10 minutes walking from our school. Um, and on the other hand, it is also a boarding school, which means we have a part of our student population living there from Monday to Friday and then going home on the weekends. Most of these students, um, or most of the students that stay in the boarding school uh, come from Puerto Natales, so they travel each week. And we also have students who uh, live in the village or in the surrounding areas because their parents work there. Um, as of today, uh, the number of students enrolled is of 20 students, um, but that number tend to fluctuate depending on the context. Uh, some of the students enrolled and then have to leave and come back to Natales and then come back to Castillo. So that number tend to always fluctuate depending on the student's uh, context. But we have also had students who have um, stayed throughout the years from first grade to eighth grade and then headed to high school. And then we have Cerro Guido School. And as I previously mentioned, it is also on the way to Torres del Paine National Park, 
but it is specifically located in Cerro Guido Estancia. Uh, today, the number of students enrolled in the school is of 11 students. Most of them live in the Estancia or in the surrounding areas because their parents work there or live there. A very interesting point here is that the area has turned into one of the most important dinosaur fossil reserves in Chile and in South America. And on top of that, Estancia Cerro Guido as Estancia per se has the largest cattle network in the history of Chilean Patagonia. So with that, you also have the promotion of tourism in the Estancia, which makes this uh, environment or context so rich, not only for the students in Cerro Guido, but also for the students in Cerro Castillo, where you have all these fields combined in one area where they have the, the opportunity to learn from hands-on experience. So when it comes to the question if in which language is important in my community or my school district, I will say yes, um, especially because of the context where we live in when one of the main economic activity is tourism. Um, so with that in mind, in considering my personal experience, I have seen the acknowledgement as well as the commitment from my uh, school administration uh, and the administration in general um, to support teaching the language throughout my years working there. Biggest challenges uh, during COVID-19, um, I will say navigating from knowing who will have access to some resources such as a laptop or a phone, and then even that phone with access to internet um, was one of the main issues to navigate for me. Secondly, in my particular case, was not having direct communication with parents. So that affected in me getting feedback, uh, which initially was uh, hard because I was working with handouts. Um, so once we were able to establish um, that bridge between me, the school and the parents, it was way easier to get feedback and to go from handouts to capsulas and from capsulas to online classes. Despite the fact of having uh, online classes, we still have students who do not have access to internet or a phone with internet due to the location where they are at. Uh, so in that case, those are still challenges uh, where we as a school community always try to solve by finding resources or uh, finding the best option to reach out to them, uh, so not to leave them behind. Overall, I will say that the main challenges regarding connectivity having the knowledge of how to navigate the different platforms online I think teamwork and having the flexibility and the time to learn how to navigate this um, has helped us and take us a long way to this day. And last but not least, uh, my first piece of advice to you, it is probably more of a reminder rather than an advice, but it is to remind yourself that less is more. And it took me a while to realize that, to be honest, because I know we want to bring the best to our students and we are passionate about what we do, but we also have to be mindful that sometimes especially in a context like today, um, 
less is more. Uh, and with that, um, my second advice will be to be mindful. To be mindful that besides being teachers, we are also daughters, sisters, mothers, fathers, brothers, so on and so forth. And that besides having the responsibility of being a teacher, we also have other roles and other responsibilities. So be flexible. Be flexible with your time, with uh, what you do with your students, your co-workers, because the context is different and we are still learning how to navigate this. Um, it can be uh, stressing and very demanding and that's why being mindful and flexible is going to help you to navigate um, nowadays and then also the future for when we come back to the classrooms. My last advice would be have fun, enjoy what you do. Um, listen to what the students have to say, the feedback they are giving you, and use that in your classrooms or in your online classes. Um, that is something that we know or we already knew, but it's always important. Finally, I want to give a huge shout out to my school community for all the effort we have put into making things uh, work. Uh, to my students, to their parents, to my colleagues, I know and we all know it has been and it could be a stressing and it took a lot of organization and communication, but um, we are making things work. And to you who took the time to watch the video, dear colleagues, um, let's support each other, let's stay connected, if you have any questions or would like to know more about the schools or are interested in any long distance uh, project, um, feel free to reach out and um, connect. So uh, thanks again for the time.